So what we wanted to share with you are 10 things that we wish we had known before we had a baby. Grab yourself a drink, sit down, come visit with us, and we're about to break down for you real talk. The people don't tell you. Asher's a toddler right now. That's a whole nother mess. We are talking about babyhood here, infancy. These are- The first year. Yeah, these are the things that were so vital for us to know in that first year that we hope will be helpful for you. Start really early advocating for yourself and your family. And I'm not just talking to the moms, I'm also talking to dads. This is something where I absolutely fell short. And we were fortunate that her best friend flew out and was with us right after Asher was born. And so thankfully she is a mom and a rock star. And so Ravena had someone who could advocate for her. And I am so grateful for that because I was a bumbling idiot. He was not, he was overwhelmed with love for his baby. And I was drugged up and in pain and I didn't know what to expect and what not to expect. But I did have a nurse who didn't do the greatest job with me. She was nervous and not paying great attention. And there was an incident where um, she, for all intents and purposes, tore my catheter out. Um, and I was really upset. And Erin was like, cool, she will not be in the store again. And she walked and spoke to the charge nurse and I never saw that nurse again. Even though it was an accident, it was incredibly traumatizing for me and would have been more so traumatizing had I continued to engage in the way I would have because I am a polite person. Like I wasn't going to complain or whine or yell. It just sucked, but I needed that piece for my own healing. And I was so grateful that I didn't have to engage with her again um, after that. And that was a lesson to learn quick and hard that it is important to stand up for yourself and your family and what you need. I hope that you have no situations like that during your birthing time, but please know that at any point, if you are uncomfortable with your nursing staff, you can speak to a charge nurse and have them switched out. And that is really common at hospitals. And my friend Kate told me that when I was like 38 weeks, I was so glad to know. So sharing that back with you guys, for sure. For me, the biggest thing about parenthood, and if you take nothing away else from this video, it's consistency. Whatever you were doing on a daily basis is what forms your child. Big things with infants are sleep and eating. So whatever choices you are making with especially those two big things, be incredibly intentional. We have, since Asher was born, taken him and brought him into our bed in the mornings. We want those morning cuddles. It's the best, you guys. If you are taking them out of their bed at night to soothe, to love them back to sleep, that's fine. But know that that I'm is- gonna start expecting that that, you. that is becoming their sleep habit. And for what it's worth, baby, get your baby to sleep, whatever works for you. What worked for us was fairly strict sleep training and Asher was an incredible sleeper. What it is about is knowing that the day-to-day -day decisions become your long-term habits. And before you know it, you are now having to break habits if you didn't realize that that was happening. I did have to call out when we were talking about what we were gonna make on this video. Over and over and over, people told us, rest before the baby comes, catch up on your sleep, go see all these movies. And you should. Mm -hmm. But like, there isn't a suitcase of sleep I can pop <laughs> open. Like, I am still tired. They're not like rollover minutes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh, I this just dated myself so poorly. <laughs> rollover sleep minutes. I wish, I wish I could look at you and tell you that was how it worked, friends. It does not. Get your sleep before, but make a plan to get some sleep after. We did shifts and it worked super well. Yeah. Four o'clock was our split time in the morning. If it was before 4 a.m. that Asher woke up, David was on duty. After 4 a.m., I was on duty and it meant that we sort of still liked each other even after the rough nights. <laughs> so yeah. I do miss those potato days though. <sighs> If you have an infant between the ages of three and six months-ish, just call me up. I'll come babysit. Once they start crawling, you're on your own. 
up. But those potato days are the best. They're snuggly and sweet and delicious. And honestly, I've spent all of the right here with a pillow and this baby on my chest. I miss it dreadfully. That being said, it's a really good opportunity to go out with the baby during the potato days. They are the easiest they will ever be. All they do is sleep on you. Get a baby carrier, go out, take the baby to a movie, get some fresh air. Now taking Asher places, well, when we can take him places, is a whole thing. And honestly, the earlier you get used to being out in public with your baby and momming on the go, the easier I thought it was for yeah. me. And I like remember, I remember coming home and like being really proud of myself that like we went on an adventure and I cried and I was okay and we made it and we survived and that we could do it again and it would just get easier and easier and it did. Uh, so, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> most of parenthood <laughs> is like a mental and emotional crush. This one's a little bit more like a horror movie. Uh, <laughs> babies will physically do some weird stuff. Hormones are hell of a drug, y'all. Your baby can be born with breasts. First poop will be hard. It is meconium, me meconium, and it comes out like a tarry substance. Yeah. Like when they start teething, not the little cute ones, when the molars start coming, Asher got acid poops. There's some kind of chemical that their bodies produce when they're teething to soften and thin the gums so their teeth can pop out. That also the tenderization of the gums also tenderizes their under bits. Yeah. We found cornstarch was the best solution. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, babies have acid poops. Crazy. In general, there are just diaper surprises. Be prepared. If you have a little girl, she might get her period right after birth. Again, hormonal. And speaking of postpartum periods, sorry if this is TMI, you should get over it if it is, <laughs> but people like mentioned that postpartum periods would be different than my cycle as pre-baby. Yeah, no I mean, I'll be totally transparent. It's horrific. I get the world's most awful cramps now. Like I cramp to the point where I vomit from the pain every month, at least one night. Uh, it's 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 been bad. It gets significantly worse when you stop breastfeeding. Yeah. Uh, suffice it to say that I'm talking with my gynecologist about it, and we're working on getting me on some treatments to help manage my cycles. But the hormone release trigger that happens can really change the way that your cycle functions. If so, do not be afraid of talking to your doctor about it because I'll be honest, I waited. Babies start teething. And at first, it's super cute. These two and these two were fine. As soon as it started creeping back, Motrin and Tylenol were our best friends. Maybe you will have a unicorn baby, but every parent I know, their baby struggles with teething. I, I don't know. I don't, we tried all of the things. Oh, we I are, have we're very good. <laughs> I have an herbalist friend, bless you, Sarah, who made me a tincture of nerve relaxing herbs. Yeah, that tincture was made in vodka. Yeah, I gave my baby drops of it. Yeah, do I think it worked? Yeah, but was I willing to try anything? I think it was more the vodka than the herbs. Whatever. I also, we, we put an amber necklace on him. Science will tell you that there's no way those <laughs> amber necklaces work because their bodies do not heat up enough to make them work. I noticed a difference in the drool. We thought it worked. We went for it. Do it work for your family. Try different things. If you're gonna go with the amber necklace, buy the slightly more expensive one because it's a choking hazard. It, it can, if it's if it's not made well, it can be a choking hazard. So not the place to skimp. Mm -hmm. it, it, we took a chance. We made an educated decision there. There were people who were like, oh my God, you're going to kill your child wearing that amber necklace and slid up all of my DMs. Uh, this is how we ended up not using the amber necklace anymore. Ravina got so nervous about all the people sliding up in her DMs that she wanted to test the, the, break, the, break, the break mechanism to make sure that it wouldn't be a choking hazard. And so she asked me to break it, and I did, and it broke properly so that it wouldn't be a choking hazard, so it was good. And then we realized that we were in a catch-22. The mechanism worked, but it was broken. <laughs> but if we bought a new necklace, how would we know the mechanism would work? That's parenthood in a nutshell, y'all. And at that point, Asher was working on his last molar, so I just tossed in. We did notice a difference. He was drooly again after, but I just wasn't buying another one. And know that 
you can try all of these things. It's still gonna suck. Pumpkin butt help. Pumpkin butt helps. Like this much. I'll leave a link for that. It's a super natural teething oil. I even tried it on myself. It pretty much just makes your mouth feel cold. And you can use it a zillion times a day. If you really want to see something scary, Google an x-ray of a toddler's mouth. And that will A, horrify you, B, make you realize why the hell teething is so awful. True fact. An x-ray of a baby toddler was the inspiration for writing of the song Baby Shark. Did you make that up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. I like I that was beautiful. Cool. I I'll call myself out on something that I really did not handle effectively. I've been honest, I made myself crazy about breastfeeding in public. Like real crazy. I pushed myself beyond any reasonable anything, frankly. If you've tuned into any of our other videos, <laughs> you know that Reveda is pedal to the metal, screaming off the cliff, Thelma and Louise. Yeah, she's both of them. I went into it with the thought process that I was just gonna do whatever worked and I wasn't going to care. I somehow warped that into needing to be Asher for my rest. Um, hormones, like I said, hell of a drug because for all of those nights that I stayed up pumping while Asher and David slept, he liked formula just as much as breast milk. He likes whole milk and oat milk just as much as breast milk and formula. And you know what he likes best of all? Picking rocks up and putting them in his mouth and eating the discarded Cheerios off the floor from under his high chair. Mind you, he doesn't pick up the Cheerios off the floor, he puts his mouth down onto the floor to eat his Cheerios. Mm -hmm. He goes for a full vacuum like, my son. So, suffice it to say, give yourself a little grace when it comes to feeding your baby because he's going to eat crap anyway and he is going to be healthy and fine regardless of what you feed him and you will be better off if you just let that come. I realize I am the complete inappropriate person to say it, but I'm going to do it anyway. Trust your body. Some people are, are natural milk farms. Dairy farm? There it is. If your body is pushing you in a direction, it's probably not And for what it's worth, I probably circled the dry in for a solid six or eight weeks that I should have, would have, could have called it. If hormones are hell of a drug. Yeah, what said. <laughs> Some stages are an enigma, and you don't figure them out, and I don't even think they figure it out for themselves, and whatever, and sometimes, like, the stage just sucks. And I'm here to tell you that it's okay going to end. Eventually you'll get past it and you'll get to a better stage. Here's the rub. Those better stages, they end too and go back <laughs> into the enigma stages. So just buckle up, enjoy the highs, and ride through the lows. I wish I had, I wish I had like some better advice on that. It's a really <laughs> fun ride. He's making it sound like like a traffic jam and it's not. It's like a fun little roller coaster. It's like one of the wooden ones. It's got <laughs> it's got some ups and downs, mosh. But like in general, it's got a merry vibe. Also, like like a wooden roller coaster, there's a lot of loud clacking and banging and screaming. Mm -hmm. It's a really good. It's a really solid metaphor. It's better than I realized when I started with it. I'm kind of impressed by it. Me too. <laughs> at some point, not at first, but at some point, probably after three or four months. I definitely forgot that I also had to be a good husband and I had to work on my relationship with my wife. I was so jacked up to be a father and so excited and wanted and, and still do want to be the best father that I just like, I just like dove in like a badger. And I did forget about my partner a little bit to the point where we had a moment where I was like, baby, when's the last time we left the child? And it had been like three months and we had to institute it. Okay, at least once a month, we are hiring a babysitter and we are leaving that child and we are having a night that is just the two of us. We get, it's not like we didn't talk about our baby or anything, but we spent the time working on our relationship because we definitely parked that unintentionally for a minute and it can be really detrimental. And this isn't something about an infant. I know so many parents forget about each other it's just your husband or your wife is not going to be as loud and as demanding as your baby is. And so when you are dealing with yelling, 
spilling messes. At the end of the day, you're exhausted and you've forgotten to save some of the energy that you spend on your baby for your partner. If you have questions about any of the things, hit us up. If you have anything to add, please do so in the comments. Like, parenting is hard as hell. Having a village and people to support you is crucial. Be a resource for your friends that are gonna go through the experience that you already know. Yeah, like every baby is different and you're not gonna be able to fix your friends' problems. But for me, hearing real life, honest experience is so helpful to make choices going forward. I know this is super cheesy. Knowledge is power. It's true. Yeah, most of the time he's cheesy and I wanna call him out, but there he's right. It really is. The most effective thing you can do, I feel as a parent, is give yourself information to make educated choices for your family so you can make them with confidence. Most definitely. Let us know what you guys think. Thanks for sticking around through all of this talkie. We'll see y'all soon, my Bye. friends.